Okay. I'll get started. The following interview was conducted with Vera Kaysen for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, August 4th, 2008 at her residence in West Lafayette. Also present is her son, Lynn Kaysen. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Let's see, Let's see that again. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents. Okay. <laughs> Tell us where you were born and when and a little bit about your parents. I was born in a little... I was helping... My father was helping a um, farmer and I was born in his... the little house that they... And near West Point, Indiana, in the country. A doctor came from the country, and he lived in some kind of a house that was on close by Grandpa, close by Grandpa Kate, Grandpa Smith. And uh, so I you, was. What year were you born? And what's the month of your. 1898. And what month were you born? What month? Of December the 18th. Oh, right close to Christmas. Yes. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. And he was working, my father was working then for a big farmer near there. And it was near my, his grandfather too, his, his father. Okay. All right. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes. I, I'm I'm the oldest of them, and then I have a sister that was two years younger than I, and then there was another sister, Ruth, who was uh, the third girl, and uh, I guess she was very, very sick. I can remember my father going out to a small, to a snowbank to get some snow for her, but she really passed away. So for a good while, it was just my sister and I. Then I think 10 or 12 years later, uh, I had two brothers born, so. <laughs> good, nice size family. Yes. Uh -huh. Tell us about going to, did you go to school there in West Point, grade school? Yes. Was it close to your house? No, no. Now, after that, we didn't live, I guess he didn't live very long there. We lived in West Point itself, had a, a, a house I know there. And I remember uh, we, we left, my mother let, let us play with her new doll, with her doll, which, and I guess we left it out one night or something. <laughs> but it was, we, we lived at the edge of West Point at that time. Well, do you remember uh, what school was like? Was it a small school, a grade school? Was it small? Uh, no, I didn't go oh. to West Point. Okay. My father uh, got work on the railroad and he worked at railroad, and I had some of my very youngest years in Logansport, Indiana. And then he took a job at Hagerstown, Indiana. And at that time, I think I was about the fourth, third or fourth grade. And, uh, and we lived there all through my high school years. He was a... a helped with building cars. Mm -hmm. I remember that they'd, he'd make the motors and then they'd take them out and sure. there's a certain co okay. company there that they made them. He would and so I was there until about my s senior year, I think junior year maybe. And then we moved back to West Point because he had, was getting tired. He was by building engines for a certain company there. And those 
uh, they'd take these cars out and test the engines that Dad would put together. And it was a big, kind of a big motor company that he was in Hagerstown. So. Did, so, you, did you finish high school then in West Point? Yes. Okay. Much to my <laughs> come down. I was in a lovely high school there in Hagerstown. was doing very well. And then when I went to West Point, the, it was the high class. It just kind of, well, didn't have a nice principal. And I was kind of a letdown from the schools that I've nearly always been on. Um, then in. After high school, what, what did you go to college? Or what did you do after you graduated from high school? Yes, I had a very unusual experience with my, I, I was, I wanted to be a teacher and there was a, a large older lady that had a school on one of the streets in Indianapolis. She was head of, all, Madam Blaker, she was head of all the, uh, um, Hi, uh, kindergartners, and she taught uh, young people. I was going to, I wanted to teach young people, and so she taught us. And every uh, school day, uh, there would be three girls get in the on the streetcar in the morning, get on the streetcar and go to this. A kindergarten. We'd be assigned different kindergartens in Indianapolis, and I was teaching along. There'd always be about three girls in these big kindergartens, and I can remember the first time a colored person, little girl, took a home and I found out she was warm. <laughs> Funny feeling. Mm -hmm. So. That lasted, I was there for, for a whole year, and I was lucky enough to get in her. She lived below, and and then the school was a big building outside of that. But above her house was a lot of it was a, a a place where th there was about twelve girls could stay there, and live there, and eat. Down below, she has. It was a big affair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She taught for fir first grade, or I mean, young for young couples. Sure. And Sounds so that was very nice. A, a nice experience. Right. And I learned a lot. Right. And you liked working through working with her. Sure. I can remember the first time. I took hold of a colored girl's hand, and it was warm. Oh, oh <laughs> what did you so, do after you left there? You didn't stay there very long? What? You didn't stay at that school very long? I, I had about one year, and then I think I went back a summer or so, just for the summer. Uh -huh. But uh, then I, I, I was able to get a school just right out here, not very far. What is the name of that? Uh, Mount Zion? Yeah, Bob. <coughs> and so my first rule was teaching first four grades. And it was just down here within about five or six miles. <coughs> and I lived with an older couple. And uh, every time I shut that no, I had to build my fires. They carried water from this farmhouse over, and everybody had a, 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 a tin cup that they dip in and get the a drink water. So, and then the children would carry the the uh, wood in, and I'd have to build my fires and keep that going. Sure. And I had the first four grades there of the nicest farm people just right out beyond uh, mm -hmm. the big school out there now. 
Sure. And uh, what is that school right by? Uh, Klondike. Klondike. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Was it was it one room or did you have more than one? Were the children all in one room? You had four classes. I had them all in one room. Okay. And they started from first grade to the fourth grade. Okay. Then there was another room in this big house that a, a gentleman had the higher grades. Okay. So it was very nice. But I, I can remember that every time I locked that door of an evening, I said, well, I'll finish here, but I'll never teach again. <laughs> but I then was very fortunate to get down on Brookston. No, at Brookston, the, where did I teach? Morton? No, I, I first down, just outside of Lafayette. In Mount Zion area? No. No? That's, that's okay. That's it, it, it's, a, you know, it's a little town. A little town. It had a high school. Romney. Oh, Romney. Romney and okay. <laughs> Lots of towns close by. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I had first grade there. Good. Big class up there. I taught there about three, two or three years. Uh -huh. well, good. And then I got, I had an uncle who knew some of the people that was on the board in West Lafayette. So he took me and introduced me to this uncle of his, or his relative of his. And uh, he, uh, I was hired by Mr. Burtsfield, which was a wonderful. Mm -hmm. Person you probably would remember. Uh -huh. I I recognize the name. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. Now, did you meet? When did you meet your husband? When you were doing the teaching? Well, I uh, he had a a little early I mean late sister, and I was her first grade teacher, so her mother invited another teacher and I there for supper one evening and he and his brother uh, took uh, took uh, us home after the dinner. She had served the dinner and had a nice evening there. They lived on, I don't know what street it is, but, well, you know where, where, uh, that there by the uh, Purdue, there was a big it was building. on Waldron Street. Uh huh. Wasn't it Waldron Street. I think that sounds right. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And so, Dean Potter lived on that street, and he just helped push uh, me along and and Lynn. He was right there with Lynn, help Lynn uh, uh, get into Purdue, where he, he was a placement. But, but yeah, that's actually. what I wanted to ask you about. But did you meet your husband when you were here? At well, he, boy, he had a, they, they had a little girl that was ready for first grade. And I had that little girl in the first grade at school. Your sister. And so, uh, when uh, Lynn, when it was time to come home, uh, go home for, I took uh, another teacher. There was two of us, and, and then they lived right over there by the university, Lynn, Dean Potter, mm -hmm. and they lived right along there. And so, uh, uh, he took me and the other teacher back. I think he had, Jack was with him too. Then uh, while we, well, when he was taking me home, he made a date with one of the Purdue dancers, uh, dances, and that's how we got started. And, and we lived together, oh, what, six or seven years. In fact, uh, we had a little trouble and and uh, we weren't seeing each other for a while, but then uh, she, uh, 
we finally got back okay. together and, and got and, married. She had a mother that I felt sorry for. She was almost impossible with him. And I did. <laughs> then did your husband start, after you got, what, did he start working for Purdue? He was. Did your husband then start working for Purdue? Well, yes, he okay. wasn't at first. He graduated, he was out. And I think he made some kind of a, a something that they were working for the underground from furnace for heating underground. And they made, he and his friend made some kind of a, uh, something that they were using on the... Wasn't that while he was working in Cleveland? Yes, he was in, mm -hmm. And I guess the people took advantage of him. They were selling it and they never gave them any chance at all. So then he got, had enough of that, so he came back and his father had a had a laundry, so he worked for his laundry for Here in, quite in, a while. In Lafayette? Uh huh. And then they Great were. American laundry down on Main Street. Oh. Uh huh. Good. They had a, a laundry there. Sure. But uh, he got to go at night over at Purdue. To interested in some of the things they were doing over there. And when he got over there, he had a, a chance. <laughs> Doc, I did the, uh, the, the man that was... Dean Potter. Dean Potter just pushed him right along. He saw to it, he got a job, and, and uh, he was working for some man that was a drinker and he wasn't in the office and Lynn hated that that girl. She he had a girl and she'd hurry up and get the man that uh was working where Lynn was assistant to it and uh, so he didn't last very long. He'd be home drinking and then this girl that worked in this office where Lynn was assistant, then uh, he uh, he could see the, so Dean Potter put him right up and right up and, you know, and things worked out very well until he ended up as the uh, head man in the Purdue to uh, to uh, find jobs for all the students, okay. and as well as the girls, he had that was a big job. Okay, that was the placement office. He was in yes. the placement office. Yes, right. uh -huh. started it. Started it in forty two. Okay, um, what was the campus? What was it like? Was it wasn't as big as it is today when you were during the forties? Oh no. Got bigger after the war, though. A lot no. of people came back. The uh, place where where was it that Brian, that Brian stayed first? Carey Hall. Carey Hall was not even there. That was somebody's iris. He was growing irises there when I can first remember, and then it started to be Carey Hall. So. So I've seen a whole lot of things happen to yeah. Purdue. Can you tell me a little bit about, did you meet any, uh, did you visit the placement office that was in the Stewart Center? Was that where it was located? Yes. Okay. No. no. Oh. Started out in Hovde Hall. Okay. Did it was what? was in the north end of Hovde Hall on the basement floor. Okay. All right. Did what, Lynn? His first office was in Hovde Hall the executive building, they called it, I think then, down on the first floor. Yes. The student health services was on one end and he was in the other end. But he finally had the girls under him too, you know. Right. So he had a big job. Right. And we tra he traveled all over the United States. 
visiting all these big companies to get acquainted with them and know when he's helping the boys. And so, so I think he did very sure, well. Right. And he was the head for a long time. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. Do you remember Dick Stewart? Well, no, Dick Stewart was his Assist assistant. Right. Where right. is he now? Dick Stewart is, is retired, and he lives in Colorado. Uh-huh. Right. Had two girls. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, yes. I've been made dresses for those little girls. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> your, children were, your children were born here in Lafayette? Uh-huh. Okay. Your son uh -huh. is sitting in. He was born uh -huh. here, too. Yeah, I'd really kind of forgotten about him. All right. Do you remember a man named Don Mallet? Who? Don Mallet, who was head of the the students. Yes. Right. You, okay. Yes. You probably met him too. And then, who was your dad? Was a good friend of of somebody that every time he was using the uh, basketball tickets. He would sit, we'd, he would give us his basketball tickets, and then we'd go and sit with the president and vice president. And, and that, that was probably in the Lambert Field House. Is that where basketball was, in the field house? Yes, right. I guess it was. Did you ever go to football games? What? Did you go to football games? Did you go to football? Yes. Or did, oh, you did. Okay. All of them. All of them. Some. Once in a while, he would sell tickets or do something there. Yeah. And I remember the bad weather. Miriam Smith and I would take uh, 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 robes, and <laughs> we'd go to the football game because they were taking the tickets and we'd go there. And sure. We'd just be warm as we could be when it was cold weather because we'd get into a sleeping bag or something. All right. Did the placement office move from Hubdy to where it is, to Stewart during yeah. your, your father's tenure? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've larger seen larger quarters. Mm -hmm. I've seen some very unpleasant things. We would sit there with the president and all the others when somebody gave me, I can't think of the name, and the person would always would give us his basketball ticket. If, and so. Uh, uh, I can remember that some very sad things happened hmm. among that faculty. One of the one of the head men's wife was had had too much to drink, and she made an awful time for their son. Huh. Everybody felt sorry. So between halves, some of the people got real close to this sun so she couldn't sit. Where did you live in Laf where did you live in West Lafayette? Where was your home? Well I lived uh, when you were married and raising on the children. Robinson Street. Okay. okay. It's a car as you co as you leave the uh, uh, the main street and okay. come up the hill. Right. We learned uh, lived uh, uh, in uh, let's see. Oh yeah, that point Robinson Street and Rose, Rose Street. Street. I know where I know where you're talking about. It's, it's and where, it was close to the schools too. Like yes, high school. Too, and, and well, school. it it wasn't too not too close. No, within walking distance. Yes. Yeah, so. okay. right. No, no, it was way well, over on oh, the was it? Uh, okay. side. Uh, okay. uh, Rose. Can you tell me a little bit about what was the village like? Do you, Chauncey Village was larger. It's not as big as it is now. Do what? Chauncey Village, where some of the stores were. You remember the village? Oh, yes. Yeah. You did some shopping My, there? Our church was down at the village. Okay. Methodist Church was down at the village. Mm -hmm. and uh, I have a... Uh, Bill, uh, I do... <laughs> He's in Florida now. He was in the army for a long time. Well, that's, uh, I don't know who you mean. When you get 
when we get the transcript, the name will probably come to you. You can just insert it in. That'll be okay. That's oh, fine. you you know, he's still alive down in in the Florida, Blackwell. Uncle Jimmy Blackwell. Yeah, uh huh. He was in the Marine Corps. Uh huh. Oh, I don't. I forgot what I was going to tell you about him. But okay. He was. He lived. He lived here too. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Went to Purdue. Did he? Okay. Yeah. He joined the Marine Corps. Uh huh. Did your um your son your son went to Purdue? Yeah, he lived. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Okay. He went to Purdue and also did the uh, oh uh, army. Okay. Training, didn't Navy. she? Oh. Navy, uh, right. Navy scholarship. Oh, Full good. Navy scholarship. Good. Yeah, he took two courses and went right into the Navy, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. From Do teaching. you remember, did you go to some uh, dances in the Union? Yes. Okay. Remember the sweet shop in the Union, too? Oh, yes. They've redone that, but it almost looks like it used to. It's nice. Yes. They still sell the same ice cream they sold years ago. Yeah. Yeah, right. What was Lafayette like? Were there, there were stores down in Lafayette? Yeah, but Well, I remember grandmother, my grandmother and her sister Aunt Ellen Burns would take us girls to Lafayette. You'd get on a little train at West Point and then you'd just go about 10 miles sure. here in Lafayette. And uh, I remember one time the river was... Uh, flooded, and Aunt Rilly, you probably don't remember her, Aunt Rilly Jones, she lived there, and, they were, and we got on a, the, the river was way high, and we got on the boat with Aunt L and Grandma Smith, when me and I were just little girls, when they'd bring us to town, and, and, Nice things here in town. We went over to Aunt Rilly Jones's place. Uh, you mentioned that your husband did a lot of traveling. You went out and talked to, to people about he, getting he, jobs for the students. Yes, we. Did you ever go with him on any of the trips? Yes, I went with him often. Good. Uh -huh, you probably often. went by train. I remember we had a. Remember when we went to California? You and Jane were on your wedding trips. <laughs> California too. He went to the Navy, I think, started in there and then joined the Navy. Uh -huh. And so, uh, yes, we did a lot of traveling. Great. And uh, he would take me with him. We'd visit these big industries and they treat us royally. So. Oh, yeah. And you got to meet some of the students at school, though, I imagine, too. Yes. Too. Right. Yeah, he would go there to interview these companies because he was representing them here at Purdue. That's right. And they would come here and interview the students. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. um, when your husband retired, what sort of activities did you, did you do any traveling after your husband retired? No, he, he came down here? with a very serious trouble with cancer. Oh, okay. And didn't... We just had lots of plans to make. We'd, we'd done all of uh, the northern part. We'd been up into uh, Eskimo country. Alaska. Alaska, yeah. And we did lots of traveling, but he came down with serious trouble. In fact, what? we had a lovely cabin up in Ely, Minnesota, and uh, we were, I knew he shouldn't be going that summer, you know. <laughs> we went and we so, Do you, do you remember, uh, is there a Purdue tradition that sticks in your mind, like the uh, a football game or something like that? Do you have a favorite Purdue tradition? Or the Reamers or the Boilermaker special? Anything like that that comes to mind, or do you just like the athletics? Yes, it has. That was about what maybe ten years ago or so. 
Audrey was in. I mean, not Audrey, but was in school then. And I was a guest at one of the football games. And uh, oh, I had a decent Bas Chuck Beard. Basketball. Basketball. Jean Katie had, had her as a special guest. Uh -huh. I think one about her 100th birthday or so. Yeah. yeah, I was a special guest that day, that day. And, uh, and Boy, uh, that was kind of really special. Oh, yes, oh, yes. We drove down a, 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 a place to get into the building, and there were two big doors open. But we drove right in there, and then we yeah, went into the basement. Oh, oh, into the... There, hey, that's cool. I like that. Nicest looking darky, darky man came and left us and killed us all in the car and helped us in. Had seats and and. Uh, yes. And you got to meet Jean Katie. You watched the whole game. Oh, oh yes. Mm, oh boy. yes. That's good. <laughs> You're a lucky lady. <laughs> well, I know. I don't remember. What was said that I was introduced over the, uh, the in middle the, of the... In Mackey Arena. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. They're going to expand Mackey Arena, make it bigger uh, along the street. You were, you were living here then, weren't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, sure, because... Of... Did you go, were you there too? Did you no, go? I oh, wasn't okay. there. Okay, that's I think nice. I was in Florida at the time. Okay. One other so thing. I was, yes, I was a guest. Yeah. And then very nice special looking colored man <laughs> helped us in and we sat right behind the players and so it was a nice evening. Yeah. All right. If I ask you, do you have an outstanding event in your life? Anything that comes to mind? Have what? An outstanding event. Something really special that comes to mind, do you think? Well, no, I think probably the wonderful things when he was president of the university, why uh, I was uh, in with the uh, social life. And, um, very nice. Thanks. Yeah. Purdue Women's Club was very Purdue, active yeah, back then. Yes. Were you in the Purdue Women's Club too? Huh? The Purdue Women's Club? Yes. Right. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. Right. I have a picture. I guess I sent that picture to Jan. That uh, after I had trouble and had somebody living at my house for help, the Purdue Women's Club gave a big lunch, and I expect there was two or three hundred women there, the Union Building, in my favor, which was nice. I had a lot. Of, Very nice. I, I really made. I guess I made more friends than I do sitting here. <laughs> That's nice. Yes. Okay. I thank you very much. You've been really, very nice, and I, I really appreciate that. Do you want to add anything to it? That mm, you can not think of? unless you have any questions. Uh, uh, anything special that uh, comes to mind? That um, you, The placement office, of course, has changed. And what did you major in at Purdue? Uh, mechanical engineering. Took okay. the industrial engineering option at that time. Okay. And what did you do after you graduated? I worked then? 30 years as an engineer in industry, oh. various places. And then came back to Lafayette? Uh, Yes, okay. I was gone from Lafayette a total of about 11 years and then came back here in 1965 okay. and worked for uh, Maury Canoy, you know that name, sure. at Rostone. Okay, good. That's very nice. Well, I'll have to say that he never gave me any trouble. <laughs> That's never, good. Never, Son, children like to hear that from their mother. I yeah. never had to worry about, <laughs> Thank about you. him. He has... Still, he has these good friends. Still, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Good friends, they were good all through high school. Still, still are good friends. Right. Thank you very, very much.